Hey everybody, I'm Max Ada, head coach of Team Juggernaut, here with a new video series, How to Have Your Best Weightlifting Meet. This is the first in our video series, Designing Your Taper. So what is a taper? Taper is basically just a reduced period of training that leads between the end of your main training cycle into the day of the meet. So it's usually gonna be a short period of time, somewhere in the range of one to two weeks, and it's a specifically designed period where we're doing less training than we normally would. There's two main objectives in a taper. The first is to decay fatigue. So what we're gonna have is, is this huge training block. We've done a ton of volume, a ton of reps. We're going really heavy in training, and now we have to actually get rid of any of that fatigue so that when we go to the meet, we're in the best shape possible. So we're gonna get rid of all fatigue in this. That means reduced training overall. The second main goal of a taper is to essentially maintain our technical skills and really just sharpen up our ability to be crisp and concise and flawless in our lifting technique for the snatch and clean and jerk. When we design a taper, we have to think about the landmarks that occur within a taper, okay? So the landmarks that are most important and are going to be most critical to assigning at the right time are gonna start with the last high intensity squat and pull workouts. So this really just means when do we end all of our high intensity squats and pulls in the sense that we're not doing any more beyond this point. Uh, heavy squats, heavy pulls are gonna be the most fatiguing. They're gonna last the longest in the terms of, in terms of it's gonna take the longest time to recover from these things. So we need to position these specifically far from a competition, far from the actual day of competition. But at the same time, we don't want to, you know, completely remove them too soon and lose the beneficial effect of having some strength stimulus in the program. The second key landmark in the taper is when the last high intensity snatch and clean and jerk workout is. Now, the last high intensity snatch and clean and jerk workout could be a session where you're working up to maximum in the snatch, working up to maximum in the clean and jerk. It could also be that it's the same workout that you take your openers. So we kind of have this period, this, this specific workout that's either a max out session or it's the day you do your opening lifts. So we can have two periods there, really just two days. Sometimes it's together, sometimes the max workout is also the last heavy workout and happens to be the day you do your openers. Sometimes they're two separate days. Just depends on the type of program, the type of training you're doing. And then finally, the last uh, landmarks that exist in the taper are the technical workouts. And these are just really light training sessions uh, that are dispersed through the taper to essentially maintain technical skill, uh, prevent you from getting kind of rusty or stiff. You know, they, they're just in there light enough sessions that you're not getting fatigued, you're not getting overly tired. They don't provide any kind of overload stimulus. They're just in there to maintain technical skills. And then finally, we don't wanna have any large overload sessions in the taper. So we wanna get rid of any kind of like really big volume workouts, really hard uh, high intensity workouts uh, outside of those final landmarks. The end of the squats and pulls, the last maximum session, possibly different than the opener session, and then all the technical workouts. There should be nothing in the taper that is overloading in the sense that it's you know, a workout that was harder than anything before it. The timeline of the taper. So how do we actually assemble these components together to get the best possible outcome at the competition, okay? We have to think first about the factors that influence you know, the proximity of these workouts to the day of competition. Those factors are the same that we use to basically gauge how a program is designed for somebody. It's gonna be something like the strength of the lifter, right? How strong the lifter is, how big the absolute weights they're lifting. The stronger a lifter is, the bigger the weights they're lifting, the further those landmarks should be from the day of competition. The lighter or the weaker a lifter is, the closer those workouts can be. So for example, you can have a lifter that's you know, a super heavyweight lifting a 200 kilo snatch, they're probably gonna have their opener you know, snatch workout several days prior to the time that a 49 kilo lifter who's you know, snatching 65 kilos would have to their competition. The second is gonna be body weight and height. So taller lifters, heavier lifters, those landmarks should be further from the competition. Lighter lifters, shorter lifters, those landmarks can be closer to the competition. Historical recovery ability. This is really just a measurement of how well or how fast a lifter recovers from training. Uh, it's not necessarily 
dependent on age and sex and height and those things, it could be an individual thing. You could have two lifters that are both 30 years old, both tall, but one just recovers faster than the other. Uh, so understand that a historical recovery ability is something that's really individual to the lifter, but somebody who recovers quicker can put those landmarks closer to the day of competition. Somebody that recover, recovers much slower, uh, those landmarks should be further from the competition. And then finally, age and sex. So age, pretty straightforward. The older you are, more than likely, the slower you'll recover from training. So those landmarks should be further from the day of competition. And sex, males are generally going to take longer to recover from those training sessions. So their, their sessions, their heavy sessions should be further. In addition to that, males generally, in most cases, will be lifting slightly heavier weights. You know, two, two athletes of the same qualification would be further from the competition to have their, their landmarks, whereas uh, females probably gonna recover faster, generally lifting a little bit lighter weights. They'll recover a little bit quicker, so their sessions can be pushed closer to the competition. Let's look at a diagram here. We can see that what we have in the first slide is we can see that structure, right? So if we look at this line going left and right, you have further from the competition day and closer to the competition day. Obviously, all the factors we just discussed, older, stronger, slower recovery, heavier male lifters are gonna push those landmarks further from the competition. On the other side to the right, we have closer to competition. It's gonna be younger, weaker, faster recovery, lighter lifters that are female. And this is a general rule, right? We're gonna slide across one way or the other based on these factors. So if we look at some examples here, let's take an example athlete here. This is the first one. This person is 20 years old, female. Their strength level is relatively low, meaning they're about 130 kilo total. Uh, the recovery is excellent and their body weight is 55 kilos. So now we have a good picture in our mind of what this lifter is. Let's look at this, this uh, timeline here as to where they're going to put these landmarks. So the three landmarks we're most concerned with are uh, obviously the day of the meet, so that's in red. And then if we look three days back, so three days prior to the meet, we would position our opener's workout, okay? So the blue bar represents that's the day we're gonna take our opener. It's three days prior to the meet. Two days before that would be our last high intensity snatch and clean and jerk. So that would be like the last day we'd have any maximum snatch or clean and jerks. Uh, and the reason these days are so close is because the lifter's relative strength is, is fairly low. Uh, she has excellent recovery abilities. So we know that that's probably a, a good time to position us to have these workouts being close, but it maximizes our ability to touch heavy weights and be technically skillful, feeling exactly what we want right before the competition. If these things were pushed way far to the left, if she was doing her last heavy snatch and clean and jerk and her openers nine days, 10 days out, she'd have a whole big long time between that opener workout and anything heavy before the meet, she'd probably end up detraining. And then finally, the last heavy, or sorry, last high intensity squats and pulls, that workout's just prior to the last high intensity snatch and clean and jerk. Uh, there's a day of rest in between those, but it's essentially just, uh, they're gonna stop, she's gonna stop doing those heavy pulls and, and squats just before she does her heavy snatch and clean and jerk, just before she does her opener. So within seven days of the meet, she's basically finished up all of her, her lifts, but she's put all those landmarks within that one week time frame. Let's look at another example. In this case, we have an athlete who's 25 years old, so a little bit older than the last one, male, strength level is very high, he's got a 360 kilogram total, recovery ability is good, and his body weight is 96. So 360 at 96 is a really uh, very well qualified athlete. If we look at where those landmarks go in proximity to the meet, we have the meet day in red, six days prior to that, they're gonna take their openers. So if that meet day is on, let's say a Saturday or Sunday, that, that opener's workout looks like it would occur right around that Monday or Tuesday mark, okay? Then a couple of days prior to that would be the last high intensity snatch and clean and jerk. So that would be like that last maximum session that might be on like the Friday prior to that Monday. And then again, just a few days before that, the last high intensity pulls and squats occur. Now, in this example, we have the lifter, it, the, because the lifter is very, very strong, uh, these, these landmarks get pushed farther to the right. They're still within a, a similar time frame. You know, it's, it's within two weeks, but these, these numbers are getting, you know, a little bit more pushed out to where 
Uh, the openers are essentially the last big workout in that final week. All his maximum lifts, etc., are being taken the week prior to that. If we look at one more example here, kind of more to the extreme, if this is a, an athlete who's 30 years old, male, very high strength level, 385 kilo total, body weight of 150 kilos, and low recovery ability, uh, we can see now where these things would change quite a bit to where we're going to have the athlete taking their openers eight days prior to the competition. So that's going to be opener workouts done essentially at the end of the second week of training before the, the competition. So almost two weeks out, they're finishing up all of their heavy lifts. So that opener session is going to be what looks like probably on like a Friday, the, the week before the meet. Then their last heavy snatch and clean and jerk, that's going to occur about four days before that on 12 days out. And their last high intensity squats and pulls will be 14 days out. Now, something to remember is that this is not set in stone. None of these things are, are entirely set in stone that you have to do it this time or that time. Uh, it's just a matter of, of what, what makes the most sense for your lifters. Using data and using you know, variables we know are going to impact these landmark placements to gauge and build the proper taper-free athlete. Uh, there's going to be a trial and error process as well. It's important to remember that you know, not everybody is going to fit into this perfectly. Just because you have all the metrics and everything designed flawlessly uh, doesn't mean you're going to nail it the, the first time. So understand you have to play with it. Uh, you may also find that in all these cases, we had a separate high intensity snatch and clean jerk workout and a separate openers workout. Uh, those could be the same day. They could be on the same day. Uh, and for some bigger lifters, they may very well be just on the same day. But understand that you know, those things can be changed a little bit here and there. The key thing to remember is the placement of these workouts. We don't want to have our you know, last high intensity squats and pulls ending three days before the meet, which is two days after our openers, which is you know, the same day or a day before our uh, maximum snatch and clean and jerk. So understand the order of these landmarks, the proximity to the competition should be determined by those individual factors. And then finally, let's just cover one more quick point, the technical workouts. If you look at this final example, we're just going to take that same uh, 150 kilo male. What do we do between the snatch opening workout and the meet? If that's eight days, well, those workouts should essentially be either resting workouts, just the blank cells would be rests, or these teal colored cells, which would be technique workout. Uh, that would be like a light session where the total volume, total training session, uh, is just a technical uh, practice, right? If you're snatching 160 kilos, your technique work might be 130 kilos, 120 kilos with no hook, no feet, or something like that. Uh, easy sessions that are designed to just keep you sharp, mostly low volume, or definitely low volume, and mostly lower intensity. So understand that between your opener workout and your meet, it's not just do nothing. You know, if you have a, a six or seven days between those, it's going to be light technical sessions. If we remember that that initial uh, smaller woman, you know, she has only a couple of days before the meet, uh, she might be able to get away with maybe not training if it's just one day before the meet, uh, or maybe only have one technical session there. So again, just some practical points to remember when we're designing the taper is to, you know, first use, use data to plan the taper. Get an evaluation of what your lifter is. Are they, are they older? Are they recovering faster, slower? Are they heavier? Are they lighter? Use those metrics to actually design the taper yourself. Then make sure you know what the landmarks are. You know, make sure you know that there's a finite time or, or a definite time that you end your heavy squats and pulls. There's a definite time to end your max out sessions. Uh, and there's a definite day to maybe take your openers or, or last warm-ups or whatever it is that you need to dial in right before the meet. Uh, and then keep records. Keep track of how this was constructed from, from meet to meet to make sure you can have a good gauge as to you know, assessing what you did. If, if you had a great taper and you position things really well, but you don't remember it, you don't keep track of it, and you're just kind of winging it the next time, you're, you're doing yourself or your athletes a disservice. Uh, and then finally, don't be dogmatic. Don't assume that just because uh, a lifter, you know, from, you know, maybe you watch the world championships and they do it this way and their, their tapers like that, 
that you have to do that or because everybody does their openers on Monday because it's convenient. Uh, but you know, you find that your athletes are more tired on the day of the meet, you know, you could bump it back to Friday or, or Sunday or whatever it is. Understand that you don't have to be dogmatic in the taper. There is no best way, but the, the principles of using the individual differences and assigning the landmarks based on that is the best method for developing the taper. If you guys like this video, check out the rest of our content on YouTube or check us out at jtsstrength.com.